Hey there, it's Bree, and these are my 21 favorite books I read in 2021. So I have several favorites videos planned, so keep an eye out for that, but this particular video are my ultimate favorites. My favorite, favorite books I read in 2021. Stay tuned because I did, I had 30 books on this list, but I knew that was excessive. As it is, 21 books is going to be a lot for me to talk about in one video, so I'm going to try and talk about them fairly quick because all of these I've talked about before in past videos. So stay tuned because if, if there is a book that I talked about and said that I absolutely loved and that it was a favorite and it wasn't on here, chances are it may appear in another video. One thing that I did take off of this list are books that were in series that I read most of the series in 2021 because I'm going to have a whole video that's just favorite series that I read in 2021. If there is a book that's very glaringly obviously missing from this list that is in a series, it's likely going to be in that video. So let's go ahead and talk about them. I have 21 books to talk about, so let's try and do it fairly fast. So I'm doing this in order, but not in the order that I like them because there's no way I could rank them. I've done that in years past. I don't think I could do it again, especially as I get more and more and more books on these lists. So this is actually in the order that I read them. The other thing I should take note of is that most of these are romance, but not all of them, including this one. This one is not a romance. It has a romance in it, but it's not technically a romance and that is The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. This book was magical. It was amazing. I read this book, I believe, in February. This was my first book that I ever read by Kay Ankrum, and it had been on my TBR forever. My mom actually gave me this physical book, and I read it physically. This is a book that I really recommend you read physically because the book itself is just, it has like mixed media in it. It has different things like it has like playlists and things in it. And then as the main character's sanity slowly starts to deteriorate, the pages get darker and darker and darker. And this is a book that has like an unreliable narrator. It's a YA book. It has a male male romance in it. It is just so beautifully written and so beautifully done. This book sticks with you. I absolutely loved this book. Next is a book that I kind of buddy read, except I read this like pretty fast and then Tamika took a while to read it, but we did end up talking about it. And that is The Ringmaster by Brianna Hale. This was this was not my first book by Brianna Hale. The first book I read by Brianna Hale was Necromancer's Bride and it is very, very different from this book. This I feel like is very, very different from most of her books because she tends to write like age gap and very, very taboo. This was an age gap, but it wasn't very taboo. It was just such a fun atmospheric book. So this is about a girl that is running away from her abusive father and the hero kind of swoops in and saves her and recruits her into his circus which is very much a found family aspect of it and she is young at the time I think she's 17 and they develop this really really close friendship that he is kind of in denial of being attracted to her because of their age gap but it's funny because I think it's his mom I'm pretty sure it's his mom that kind of notices first and it's like her 18th birthday and his mom's like it's fine and then ends up turning into this amazing romance there are are triggers for in this book that you should definitely look up. There's one that I know really bothered Tamika about it, which is an unplanned pregnancy that um, the hero kind of took advantage of the heroine not having a lot of knowledge about it. So keep that in mind. But ultimately, I just I loved this book so, so much. It's my favorite book by Brianna Hale and obviously one of my favorites that I read last year. So even though this book is part of a series, I did not read most of this series in 2021. I read it, I believe, the year before. So I'm not including it in my series favorites but that is Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. It is. It should come as no surprise that this is on this list. I think this one might be my favorite in the entire series. And that's really hard because they're all very close. Like I love them all, but I think this one might be my favorite. I love the grumpy sunshine in this. There's obviously Talia Hibbert is so great with representation. There's autism representation in this. Um, they talk. She talks a lot about stimming in this, which I really appreciated. And I also like that the heroine, she's very kind of flexible and because of that her parents are withholding her inheritance until she can like finally settle down and find a job and she ends up randomly walking into this interview 
for a chef position and the guy that one of the guys that's interviewing her is completely put off by her because she's not dressed up she just randomly walked into this and she's very casual about it he initially doesn't want to hire her for the position but then they're put in a situation where and it's a very funny kind of meet cute type of situation she ends up becoming the chef for his uh, bed and breakfast place and it's just so great because there's forced proximity in it and of course it's talia hibbert so you have amazing steamy scenes and it's funny and it's just oh i love the series and I love this book. This next book is also part of a series but I actually read the first couple of books in this series like a few years ago but I slowly but surely was making my way through the series and when I got to this book I was like oh my gosh this is my favorite in this entire series and that is Hookshot by Kennedy Ryan. This is a special edition cover. The actor age e. Brown, Eve Brown was a special edition cover. Beautiful but I loved this book. This book has a badass heroine and a hero that absolutely deserves her and notices her badassery. It's also a single father. Obviously it's Kennedy Ryan so check out the trigger warnings because there are some heavy topics that are broached in this. It's pretty heavy but oh my gosh the romance is so swoony and there's also a great familial aspect of it especially on the heroine side and almost this like magical realism type of aspect in it that I thought was interesting. Very, very low key, not a huge part of the book, but just enough sprinkled in there. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I really need to reread this book because I loved it so much and I read it toward the beginning of the year. So Mariana Zapata comes out with a new book pretty much once a year and every year that book is on my favorites list and this year it is All Roads Lead Here and I promise I'm not just putting her on here just to put her on here because it's kind of become tradition even though it kind of has but that's not why I'm putting this on here. I'm putting this on here because I genuinely enjoyed this book and I am dying for the audiobook. We always have to wait forever to get the audiobook for her, for her books, but oh my gosh, this book was so so good. What's interesting is that I think originally she was writing this as like a thriller mystery, but then she ended up switching it up and just turning it into her regular like contemporary romance. And there is a little bit of that aspect in it because the main character's mother is missing. And the reason why she's going to this mountain town, this small mountain town, is because she wants to like hike the trails where her mother was. Um, and then it's a very much like grumpy sunshine and no one does grumpy sh sunshine better than Mariana Zapata, especially when grumpy heroes have a heart. He is a single father and she ends up renting out a room in his house unbeknownst to him because it was actually his son that put the room up for rent. And so she doesn't really have anywhere else to stay. So even when she gets there and he's like, no, you can't stay here. She's like, I have nowhere else to go. And then she ends up staying and there's just so many, like as it is with every single one of Mariana Zapata's slow burns, all these little moments are just so beautiful and so intense and just so full of longing and tension. It's just, oh, this book was no different. I absolutely loved it. Next on this list is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. You guys know I'm absolutely obsessed with Archer's voice. This book is a very, very close second to Archer's voice. So this is another book, very emotional. Definitely check out the trigger warnings for this. There is kidnapping in this. The hero was kidnapped as a young child. He was kidnapped for like seven years or something and then he escaped. But when he came out on the other side of it, he has, he is still obviously dealing with that trauma, but he also has this very optimistic outlook. And the heroine went through her own issues, like super intense issues. Her mom who was dying, she had a terminal illness, kind of dropped her on the doorstep of this father that she never knew and he was very neglectful and she came out on the other side not doing very well she ends up becoming a stripper in this club and the hero goes to the strip club because he really is he can't handle intimacy and people touching him so he goes there and they have this like see see each other across the room and they have this like really strong connection and he asks her like he goes to the back and kind of asks her like hey would you be able to help me get used to touch and intimacy and at first she says no, but then something happens and there's force, pro I guess it's considered force proximity, but there's caretaking in this book. Oh my gosh, it is so good. So, so good, but also very emotional, lots of triggers. Next up is How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. This, I believe, is the author's first book and I cannot believe it because this was so good. Another one that has a lot of triggers. <laughs> I feel like, obviously, I love emotional books that have like heavy topics in them, but this book I really, really enjoyed. The heroine is a teacher, the hero is an ultimate cinnamon roll, and it's a one night stand turned something more. And I just, oh my gosh, there's just so many swoony moments in it. I absolutely adored 
the hero in this. He's one of my favorite heroes. You guys know that I love cinnamon roll heroes, but this one kind of took me by surprise. I was going to books by new authors with a with a little bit of hesitancy because there's I feel like there's always you know, a little bit of awkwardness in someone's first book, but I did not feel it at all in this book. Like, I cannot wait for what this author has planned next. Next on this list is Parker by Jack Harbin. This is a very emotional book that Jack Harbin wrote, and I say this all the time, every time I mention Jack Harbin, he is a jack of all trades. Sorry to be, that was really corny. I didn't mean for that to be like a pun, but it just kind of came out. Anyway, he can pretty much write any type of book, and he has written like taboo romances, he's written erotica. He's written so many different types of books and I feel like every time I go into his books I never really know what to expect. I actually read this book as an arc and I don't normally do that. This was one of the only arcs that I read this year actually because I tend to read more backlist books but when it comes to authors like Jack Harbin, I will absolutely read an arc of Jack Harbin's books because one, I want to help him promote it, but two, I just know that I'm going to love it. I'd always been hesitant back when I was reading more arcs going into books by authors that I'm not familiar with because I'd feel terrible if I didn't like the book. And I know part of the reason authors put out arcs is to get more buzz around their books. And I don't wanna be the person that's like, this sucks. But it was such a pleasant surprise to read this because it wasn't a surprise. Like, honestly, I wasn't really surprised that I loved this book. I never really know what Jack Harbin is gonna throw at me. Like, he definitely doesn't typecast himself at all. And this book was just so freaking good. This is an age gap romance and it's forced togetherness, forced proximity. There is a, like, mother grandmother type figure in this and she kind of takes in troubled children and Parker is already living with her and he's been with her for a while. The main hero in this, he is new to living with her and they do they have one of the best meet cutes because there is a big misunderstanding and they get into a bit of a scuffle about it and it's just so good and so full of tension and just so emotional and beautiful there are triggers for this i believe jack lists them in the beginning of the book if i remember correctly but oh my gosh i absolutely love this book if you haven't read it yet and you like emotional books this is a great place to start it's a male male romance as well i don't remember if i said that next up is waking olivia by elizabeth o'rourke this is another book that kind of took me by surprise. This was recommended to me and I had never heard of it before and I picked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe more people aren't reading and loving this book. It's so freaking good. This one's much more new adult and I haven't really loved a lot of new adult books, but I absolutely adored this book. It's also very, very, very heavy. Check out the trigger warnings. <laughs> okay, here, I'm just gonna say this as a blanket statement. Every single book I ever talk about from here on out, make sure you check out the trigger warnings because sometimes I don't remember them or I don't catch them all. So me like listing all of the trigger warnings, I feel like you can't really depend on me, but you can depend on me to read a lot of books that have a lot of trigger warnings because there are a lot of them are emotional. And this one was definitely one of them. The heroine, this one is an amazing track star, but she has a sleep running problem. Like she runs in her sleep and she finds herself in like weird places and ends up having to run back. She is transferred to another college. She was on the original college's track team, something happened and she was transferred to this new college and the assistant coach does not trust her because of why she was transferred there. And so it's definitely enemies to lovers. There's an age gap a little bit, it's forbidden romance. And it's just the caretaking in this is amazing. And it's so emotional and so interesting, such an interesting premise and just beautifully written. And it was so, 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 so good. For those of you who like Emma Scott and Mia Sheridan, but also like new adult books, I think you'll like this. Next up is a monster romance, and it's a monster romance that I feel like a lot of people loved, a handful of people absolutely did not love, but I loved it, and that is A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor. I heard recently that reverse harem is not the best word to use, so I struggle a little bit with what to use instead. I'm going to say polyamorous, but just know that the heroine, the main character, has relationships with several monsters and they're all different types of monsters. She's very much in tune with her sexuality. She's a very sexual person and she ends up getting this job at, it's almost like a brothel a little bit, but she has much more control over her clientele and she basically goes from like being a maid to working at this place where she has a bunch of monstrous beings and creatures and people 
who she has relationships with and it's super super steamy there's not a ton of plot in this but it's still really really good next up is tangled wires by lillian lark this was my very first lillian lark book but i have read a couple of other books by this author since then and i love them this is a super short novella but i am telling you it reads like a full-length book it is so good this is a dark sci-fi romance it has it's an ai romance and kind of enemies to lovers. It deals with a lot of really, really heavy topics, but oh my gosh, it's just so unique. I think this is the first book that Lillian Lark wrote too, and it's, oh my God, it's so good. I buddy read this with Steph and like our our group of people who um, read weird, weird romances. A bunch of us read this book. It is so good. It is an AI enemies to lovers workplace romance that is dark. Next on this list is Ruthless Strangers. Ma it's Mafia Wars book number one by Maggie Cole. This is a book that was recommended to me by Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life and holy crap this was such a great recommendation. I've been wanting to read more mafia romances and she recommended this one to me and oh my gosh it's so good. The premise of this, this is one of those situations where the book lived up to the amazing premise. So basically the heroine has just finalized her divorce she goes on this girls weekend with her friends the hero ends up overhearing her talking to her friends about wanting to have a one night stand with a mystery guy where she never sees his face and he's like I can do that for her so he ends up like talking to her friends and convincing them to let him be that guy for her so the first time that they're together she never sees him she only hears his voice but they have this amazing connection this amazing night together and then fast forward like I don't know if it's years or months later but you fast forward she's at work she's about to meet with a client and she hears his voice and it's him like that moment when she hears his voice is so freaking amazing it was so so good I absolutely loved this book my favorite mafia romance so far next up is the book that started it all it started my obsession with this author and that is the Quarry Master by Amanda Milo. I talk about this book all the time. This is a slow burn, grumpy sunshine romance. It's an alien romance. Don't be put off by the cover. I absolutely love this cover, but yes, that is the hero on the cover. These aliens are very dragon-like, and the heroine is a human woman who is on this alien planet and she is working for the hero. And <laughs> it's so funny because he is such, he is the ultimate reluctant grumpy hero and it's one of my favorite alien romances it's slow burn and it's so so freaking good next on this list is an ultimate all-time favorite i had a reading vlog where i read this book and that is real by kennedy ryan i have a feeling that this book is going to show up on a lot of people's 2021 favorites list and for very good reason this book has amazing chronic illness representation but of course there are a lot of triggers in this this book made me cry not a lot of books make me cry it mostly made me cry because of the representation the heroine this is handling her chronic illness diagnosis in a natural way. And I just, I've never seen that before in a book. I've obviously read books that had chronic illness in it, but I've never read a book where heroin is handling it in a way that I'm handling my chronic illness. Also, the hero's mother had MS. This is a kind of forbidden romance. The hero is a director. He's creating this film about this actress who not a lot of people knew about, and he's looking for the perfect actress to portray her. He happens to go to a Broadway show and the heroine is performing. She's actually a understudy and it's her first time performing it. And she's so amazing. And he's immediately like, she's it. She's the person that I want. But he's also very quiet and stoic and um, standoffish. But then she is asked to audition for it. And he just knows right away that she's the perfect person for it. It's forbidden because he had a very public relationship with one of the lead actresses in his movies and it did not end end well at all and he purposely is distancing himself from any actresses that he's working with so he doesn't want to have a relationship but their attraction is undeniable there's amazing caretaking in this the chronic illness representation is amazing the audiobook is fantastic book is so good i read it twice last year once i listened to the audiobook the next time i read the physical book and annotated it and have passed it along to my family so that they can annotate it it's amazing you need to read it everyone needs to read this book it's so good this next book despite being part of one of my all-time favorite series is not going to be on my favorite series of 2021 list because i read the other books in previous years but that is with you forever by chloe lease i am struggling so hard to figure out which book in this series is my favorite i want to say it's this one but i'm not 100 percent sure this is a contemporary marriage of convenience done so right there's forced proximity in this chronic illness representation 
there is a scene where she's literally going and getting her infusion and the hero does not do well with needles and it's the cutest freaking thing of my life. He also is autistic. He is he is one of the characters in the series that I have been dying for his book and I like built up his book in my head Ever since I was reading the first book, I have been waiting for his book and this was able to live up to my expectations. And that is not an easy thing to do because I had very, very high expectations, but I absolutely loved this book. Next on this list is a book that I feel like everyone has been loving and for very good reason, and that is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This has a woman in STEM. It is fake dating. Um, it's also apparently Rilo fan fiction, but I guess I don't know enough about Rilo for me to have put together the parallels, but I absolutely loved this book. I loved every single second of this book. It's an all-time favorite, not just the favorite of 2021. I cannot wait for more books in this series. I'm sure you've heard people talk about this over and over and over again, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but just know I absolutely love loved this book. Next up is Run Posey Run by Kate C. Wells. This is a very dark book that will not be for everyone, but it was 100% for me. I love this book. It's a psychopath romance. The hero is a genuine psychopath. And honestly, that's the main reason why I love this so much because he doesn't think that he can love anybody and he never has before. So when he does start to fall in love with the heroine, he has no idea what's going on. And that was my favorite thing about this. This book is a lot shorter than than I thought because I just got this physical copy, copy for Christmas. But this book was so freaking good. It was so good. It gave me so many butterflies despite it being a very dark romance. The hero and the heroine were actually are actually together in the beginning of the book, but then he thinks that she's cheating on her, so he like kind of throws her out on her ass and then ends up hunting her down again because she's in danger, but kidnaps her. And it's very... I, I'm not typically into the kidnapper type of trope thing, but I was into it in this one because of the hero. And I really liked the heroine, even though she was a bit of a doormat at first, I still really liked her because she was also very strategic and I could see why she was the way she was and why she put up with what she put up with. But oh my gosh, this book was so good. Next up is The Hookup. This is Moonlight and Motor Oil, book number one by Kristen Ashley. This was a book that actually Steph from Novelty Corner had me read for a reading blog. And it's kind of cute because Heather from Hey yeah, Booktubes actually had her read it, I think, for a reading blog. And so it's kind of been like a favorite that has been passed on from booktuber to booktuber. And I love that about it. This book is a one night stand turned relationship and it's just so good. There are so many swoony moments in this. The hero is very much alpha, but he's also very, he's kind of quiet. And I love that about him. This book was a reminder that I had been putting off reading anything by Kristen Ashley for a while. And I have no idea why, because I absolutely, absolutely loved this book. Next up is The Intimacy Experiment. It's The Roommate Number Two by Rosie Dannon. This book completely took me by surprise. I really liked the first book in this. It wasn't my favorite, but I really, really liked it. And I don't, I didn't know what to expect from this book. It was just available on, on Libby. And so I picked it up and I read it and I was like, holy crap, I love this book. So the heroine is actually, and I, I shouldn't have been surprised because I had forgotten, but I really liked the heroine from the first book. I loved her in the first book because she is an ex-porn star and the hero is a rabbi. So it's a very interesting dynamic between the two of them, but he is a very progressive forward thinking rabbi and she is a porn star turned businesswoman. And I love a, an amazing businesswoman. And so just, there are so many amazing things in this, but specifically the romance. Like I loved how the hero did not judge her for her past. That was probably my favorite thing about this book. Absolutely loved it. Oh, I have a physical copy of this book, but I forgot to grab it. It is Mr. Romance by Lisa Raven. I feel like if you watch any of my recent videos, you've heard me talk about this book. I absolutely love it. The premise is amazing and it lives up to the premise. The hero is kind of like an escort for very wealthy women, except instead of only like escorting them to dates that they set up, he actually sets up a whole scenario, a whole romance scenario and turns himself into the romance hero that they need. And the heroine writes articles for this news outlet that usually does very clickbaity things, but she wants to write a feature article on him because when she first finds out about him, she thinks that it's absolute BS and she thinks that he's exploiting these women. So she like does a lot of research and tries to like apply to be one of the women that he like takes out on a date or whatever. And it ends up turning out so amazing because he obviously 
has never has relationships with the women that he works with. And she's obviously there just to investigate him. Oh my gosh, it is so, 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 so good. And then last but not least is Rush. It is City Light series, book number three by Emma Scott. You do not have to read this series in order. I have not read any of the other books in this series, but this book was amazing. The hero is blind and he is just recently blind. He's dealing with grief from the loss of his eyesight. And the heroine is dealing with a lot of grief from the loss of her brother. She used to play the violin. She graduated from Juilliard, so she's really, really good, but she hasn't played in a really long time. And the whole book is about her helping him get over his grief and get over like he's he's very grumpy and has pushed a lot of people away from in his life because he is so upset by what happened to him because he was very much like a thrill seeker and now he can't do he can't live the life that he always wanted to live she is helping him helping him out of that and he kind of helps her find her music by them falling in love and it's just absolutely beautiful she ends up becoming not really a caretaker just more of like an assistant but she lives with she ends up moving in with him because she's going through some rough times financially and at first, you know, he's extremely grumpy. And I don't know if it's necessarily grumpy sunshine. She's not necessarily a sunshine character, but he's definitely grumpy. She ends up broadening his world a little bit and helping him see through music and it's so beautiful all right guys that's it those were all the books that i absolutely loved in 2021 thank you guys so much for watching this video let me know down below some of your favorite books from 2021 thank you so much and as always happy reading 